We have some phenomenons going on in the stock market right now that people are having trouble understanding or wrapping their heads around why certain things are transpiring this way, why certain stocks are struggling, why other stocks are doing absolutely tremendous in this market. And I want to go ahead and today and explain exactly what's going on. We're going to talk about three stocks in this video here today. One of them is Tesla. People are looking at Tesla are like, what happened to 50 to 60 bucks, right? A lot of people were convinced the stock was going to 50 to $60. It just hit over $200 now at this point in time, right? And so I want to explain what's actually going on with Tesla. Like, why is this stock performing the way it's actually performing? And let me also say, I'm very happy I closed out of my, uh, let's call it my bet against Tesla. I took a $6,478 profit on that baby, and the timing couldn't have been better, to be honest. They're looking at Metastock. They're saying, why does the stock go up? Every single day, it seems like. Every day you wake up, it's like another 2%, 3%, 4% on the stock. It's incredible, right? It seems like every day the stock hits a new new high and a new high. You know, 2.2% move now today in the public account, $19,500. It's incredible. People are like, what is going on here? Why is a stock like that doing that? I'll explain that in this video. A stock like Elf, every dip is bought in Elf. And I mean every last freaking dip is bought in the stock. It will dip and then right up, boom, 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 it's bought right up. Why is that happening? Why other stocks continue to dip further, further, further? There's no recovery and those stocks aren't performing, right? I'm gonna explain all this in detail here today so everybody understands what's going on here. This is a higher level video. This is one you're definitely gonna watch, wanna watch every single second of this video. Maybe watch this in the future, come back to this video because I'm gonna explain a lot of things in this video that just most people aren't aware of that are going on out there, okay? All I ask in return is that you smash that like button and you make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We just hit a new all-time high subscribers in the history of this channel. I appreciate y'all and thank you everybody that smashed that like button. Even the people that think they're too good to, to smash it, I appreciate you smashing it as well. If you wanna join my Patreon, there'll be a pinned comment down there. I am making moves in there in less than 24 hours. The popular tier is right there. Also consider that VIP tier. I'm telling you, that's got that ridiculous course in it. Become master stock market, my number one course ever. <laughs> You know, people think I'll just join the cheapest one. Well, you know, you get what you pay for. That's all I'll say about that. And that course is, whoo, baby, that's a holy smoke. This ain't no dang joke, okay? Pin comment. So Tesla, obviously stocks back over 200. What happened to 50 to 60 bucks, right? First of all, the 50 to $60 thing, you know, there's just a lot of people just throwing out prices. When stocks are going down, people just start saying, whatever. It has no fundamental backing. It has nothing like that. It's just like, uh, 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 you know, just ridiculous talk. You know, no different than when you're in an insane bullish market, you know, any price targets thrown out there. In a super bearish market, they just throw anything out, like, oh, 50, 60 bucks, oh, dollar. How about zero dollars? How about that, right? Now, something very important you got to understand is, you know, I posted this in the private stock group, I believe it was yesterday, yeah. A couple of charts to keep in mind for, Fed, for future Fed hike cycles and unemployment cycles. Uh, I would always remember these. Market bottoms that bottomed about nine months before unemployment peaked in 2009. Market bottom nine months before the Fed did their last rate hike in the latest hike cycle, right? Now, this is very important. Why is this important? Something like this shows you the stock market plays in the future. It's not waiting for confirmation that a bottom has been reached or a number is as bad as it's going to get or as good as it's going to get. It's playing to the future, Okay. The market bottoms way before the bad news ends. You can keep getting bad news and bad news, bad news in regards to a stock, and yet the stock price is moving up. You can keep getting bad news and bad news in the stock market, and yet the stock market's moving up. And a lot of people have trouble wrapping their heads around this because they, they think the world should be perfect. And in terms of like, you get no more bad news, okay, now the market can go up or stock go up. It doesn't work that way. It's never worked that way, folks, okay? Tesla margins are likely going to hit a new low this quarter we're in right now, okay? The quarter we're in right now, Tesla margins are likely going to hit a new low for the company. I see a pretty decent probability of that. Then they're going to likely stay super low next quarter as well. But Tesla stock bottoms out way before margins and EPS bottom out, right? So although... We're in a quarter right now where the margins are going to be horrible, horrible for Tesla standard, by the way, likely bad next quarter. The market, the, the market's already looking to the future. Okay. The market's already looking to the future. And it's already thinking about the back half of the year. Great investors can see the future. This is, this is why you make the big bucks. Okay. And if I look at like myself, right, I'm not always going to be right, but the bottom line is I'm right very often. 
very often. Am I going to be perfect? Absolutely not. But it's my job to see the future. It's my job to look at a meta stock years ago and be able to see that future, right? And now sitting on $658,000 gain. It was my job to see Tesla. It's my job to see Amazon, to see Elf, to see Palantir. That's what my job is at the end of the day, okay? And that's what as a great investor you do. And I have four, four silver play buttons in my house, right? Like why have I had that much success on YouTube? I don't even edit my videos. Huh? I literally just take a picture of myself for the thumbnail and throw it up there. I'd spend less than five minutes on a thumbnail. I just put in such little effort to YouTube compared to like all these edits and cuts and all these people have these prepared, they, their whole video is prepared and they got pre-prepared remarks and all this stuff. And yet I'm one of the most successful finance people in the world year in and year out. I get the most views. I make the most money. Why is that? with the least effort in regards to my videos. The reason being is because people know I know the future. I'm not always going to be right, but I'm being right a whole lot more than I'm wrong. And so they tune in year in and year out to hear my opinions on stocks in the market in general without all the fancy cuts and the fancy edits. And I make my videos super long. I'm not even like the most well optimized. Like if anything, you know, especially in this day and age, you're better with like shorter content. And I'm out here putting like 30 minute videos out. It's because people know that I know a lot and I know a lot about stocks and the market. And so they tune in year in and year out, right? And it's because you see the future. There's a great line in a movie called Margin Call. And he says, you know, why do I get the big bucks? He flies in on a helicopter and, uh, you know, everybody's just, you know, like bowing to this man. He's like, why do I get paid the big bucks? And basically he goes into the reason he gets paid the big bucks is to tell you what's going to happen in the future. Everybody else in that room is telling him what's going on right now. He's there to look out to the future and say, we need to make certain moves, right? You, you look at this man right here. Do you know who he is? Some of you guys might know who he is. I'm not even going to tell you who that is, okay? Some of you guys might know who he is. Some of you guys are probably like, I don't know who the heck that guy is, okay? That man right there makes over $10 million a year. And the reason he makes over $10 million a year is because he's really freaking good at being able to predict what is going to happen in the future and the right plays to call in the perfect situations. And he wins Super Bowls and he's very, very successful. And just for playing a game, just for coaching a team and knowing what is likely to play out in the future and the perfect plays to call, man makes over $10 million a year. You got to ask yourself, why does Jamie Dimon make $36 million in 2023, right? Jamie Dimon makes that much money and gets paid that much money because he can see the future. He can put JP Morgan in the best position possible to get through any market possible, right? Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. I believe he's still the richest man in the world. Why is he so rich, right? And people get confused with this. They think he's like down there at the Tesla factory, like with the engineers and like doing stuff and at SpaceX as well. No, no, no. Okay. Elon Musk knows the future. Elon Musk can predict the future and then he can put that into action and he sees we're going here. We need to go here next. And he knows how to put that in motion. So then a bunch of people inside an organization can all do that, right? It's magic. Franz, Elon Musk. I mean, who could have ever thought this would be the most talked about exciting vehicle to be launched in human history? There's only two men that really could have seen that Elon Musk and Franz. The rest of everybody's just too busy worried about debating it and whether they love it or whether they hate it. And all along, those guys knew this is going to be ridiculously successful. Everybody's going to want one of these, right? Steve Jobs. I mean, you know, your kids, kids, kids are going to be learning about Steve Jobs someday. You know why? Because he was able to predict the future. We're going here. We're going to make that happen, right? And so in the market, it's the same exact thing. A stock like Meta, for instance, right? You look at Meta. This stock bottomed in November of 22. When did its numbers really bottom? The truth is the numbers really bottom when you start showing year over year growth. Okay. Well, they didn't show any when the stock bottomed. They didn't show any growth the next quarter either, because if you compare that, they did $4.6 billion in net income versus over $10 billion in that previous year. Right. Then the next quarter, they did $5.7 billion, but that compared to $7.4 billion in net income the previous quarter. So their numbers were still bad trash, if you want to call them that, even a long time after the stock had bought him. Finally, finally, when this quarter came out, this was already late July, early August of 2023, right? Finally, they started showing year over year growth. So in a perfect world, you would say, okay, in July or August of 2023, that's when Meta stock should have bought him because then the numbers actually started to increase year over year, blah, blah, blah. 
It's not the way the market is. The market is made up of participants who it's their job to see the future and be able to predict the company's going to get back to positive net income growth, but they start buying the stock and acquiring the asset way before it actually plays out. Okay, This is extremely important to understand in the market. There's a belief that Tesla in the back half of the year is going to see their numbers improve. I have that belief, and I can tell you there's a lot of people with big money that also have that belief. And so that's why a Tesla stock is starting to perform very, very well overall. Now, you can say, you can go to the stock and you say, the stock went from $400 to $100. And it happened quick, right? And who knew that was going to happen? I told everybody, watch out, Tesla's going to go through a tough time. I try to talk the, you know, the, the bulls off of their insane bullishness they had in 2021 in regards to Tesla. I'm like, I know this company really freaking good. They're going to have a tough time. And what did I say? I said that tough time is going to last several years. And sure enough, I was right on about that, right? The big fall. And it was before it was obvious to most people. It was obvious to me, but it, for most people, it wasn't obvious. By the time it was obvious, the stock was already bottoming. Keep that in mind, right? And why did that happen? Well, you got to first understand why Tesla went on its first big epic run. Why did it go on that big, huge run that attracted so many people that were never invested in Tesla before to all of a sudden start to buy this stock in 2020, 2021, 2022, right? They flipped to profitability. They went from being a huge money losing, money suck company to now a fun company that's making some real dough and has great fat cash flows. They also had a Model Y ramp and then they had fed funds rate at near 0% for most of that time, right? So guess what happened? I looked at this and I said, oh, all the things that have been going right for Tesla are now going to be working against this company, right? Whereas their profitability is going to start going down. Model Y is going to already been ramped. So there's not that new excitement cycle for Model Y. And then the Fed fund, obviously the Fed funds rate went to 5% plus. The Fed took away the punch bowl, as they say, right? And I knew that was going to happen. I tried to tell people, they didn't listen, but it is what it is. But in regards to that, like... It was obvious for me to see that. It was obvious when most people just couldn't see it. They couldn't like wrap their heads around like what was going to happen there. Now, think about Tesla moving forward. We're in a bottoming out phase for margins. Profitability could start to increase for the company as early as the back half of the year. Cybertruck's going to be ramped by the end of this year fully, right? Plus, we have the next big excitement cycle, which will be around the Model 2 or whatever the next vehicle is. So, now we're going from a very depressing cycle in regards to Tesla to a very, let's call it, exciting cycle for Tesla over the coming years, years, okay? And Tesla will be primed for its next big bullish run, and it already honestly started that big bullish run, right? Now, that goes into meta. Why does the stock go up every dang day, right? It's like every, it seems like every day you wake up, meta's up again and again and again and again and again, and it just doesn't stop going up, right? Well got to understand a few things, okay? The first thing is, and there's different reasons why different stocks go up, and that's why you can't just say it's uh, like one stock, it, it all works this way. No, it's a case-by-case -case basis, okay? This is a high-level game of chess. The reason meta keeps going up is there's a rotation game going on, okay? This rotation game is out of stocks like an Apple, for instance, right? Apple, after that latest earnings, it became very obvious to everybody that Apple's not going to have a great 2024, right? The numbers are not going to be very exciting in 2024 for Apple, right? And so what was also, also found out, it looks like it's going to be a great year in 2024 for Meta, right? So now we have a game of rotation of people rotating money out of a stock like, like Apple. This is the past three weeks. Apple stock's gone down about 6%, while Meta stock's gone up 23%, right? And that money wrote, because keep in mind, if people are putting selling pressure on, on Apple stock, let's say day in and day out, well, the money's going somewhere after that, right? It's not just going to like evaporate. If the selling pressure is being put out there, the money's going to go somewhere. And I can tell you where it's going. It's pretty obvious at this point in time, right? And keep it this in mind. Apple's around, you know, we can call it off roughly a $3 trillion company. Well, Meta's a little over a billion, a little, a little over a trillion dollar company, right? 1.2 trillion. And so when money rotates out of an Apple, you know, you're talking about a company that's over 2x the size market cap as a meta. So then money coming into a meta can be very impactful for what happens with the stock price, especially when no one wants to sell meta right now, knowing that their numbers are likely going to be phenomenal this year and likely knowing there's still a lot of upside in the stock. Who's out there that's like, I've got to sell meta right now. So you have a lack of sellers and you have buying pressure from the rotation game. On top of that, there's other rotation going on. 
For instance, you look at a stock like Google McDougall, right? Google McDougall, this past three weeks or so, this stock is down about 5%, we can call it, while Meta is up 23% in that same amount of time. Why is that going on? Well, Google and Meta always are compared to each other. And it's very obvious, if you look at the latest numbers, that Meta is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. And it's the far better growth candidate out of those two companies. And so people are even looking at that and they're saying, why would I want to be an underperformer like a Google? Why not put my money in an overperformer like Meta, right? The, like Meta's made, Meta's made a massive divergence between what their revenue is going up, what their earnings per share is going up versus Google now at this point in time. And so people are saying, I want to be in the big dog. I want to be in the one that's actually growing substantially. And so don't be surprised at all if Meta's market capitalization passes up Google. Do not be surprised at all, okay? Now, on top of that, in regards to Meta, and I don't think I'm the only one that, you know, is, is figuring this out. I think there's some big money out there also figuring this out. There's going to be a price target scramble that's going to happen likely in Meta over the next two to three months. What is this? So, a lot of analysts are bullish on Meta, right? 40 have a strong buy, 11 have a buy, 8 have a hold, 2 have a sell. So, overwhelmingly bullish, obviously, on Meta, as you would expect, given their great numbers and the stock price performance and all sorts of things. But, where analysts are screwing up here is their price target's way too low. This is usually a 12-month price target. They're at 511 right now. Well, Meta stock right now is at 484. It's going to be 500 plus very soon here. So what's going to likely transpire is a price target scramble over the next two to three months where these analysts have to just suddenly up their price targets. I believe I just heard today an analyst up their price target on Meta from like 475 to 550 or 555 or something like that. This is going to play out in mass. Look at how many analysts cover and almost every single analyst is going to have to bring up price targets soon because they're looking sillier and sillier and sillier as the days go on here in regards to Meta stock, right? Even the more let's call it less bullish analysts, they're going to have to bring up their price targets. The average price target on Meta right now, in my opinion, should be somewhere around seven, uh, $575 to maybe $595. So we're way low. So there's going to be a big game of catch up here in regards to that price target. And then that's going to be Whenever you get that big price target scramble, that's like becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of like pushing the stock higher and higher and then the analysts have to keep coming out, running over each other, bringing up their price targets one after another, after another, after another, and it just creates another huge bullish dynamic in the market overall. So that's got to play out here, right? And on top of that, to add maybe insult to injury in this whole situation, if we can call it that, the valuation's still way too cheap on Meta. Meta should easily be commanding a 30 to 35 forward P right now, and it's easily given the growth rates this company has on their top line and bottom line. And so you have a valuation here in regards to Meta that's far too cheap, far too cheap. And so you have all the dynamics lining up perfectly for Meta at this point in time. And that's why that stock just goes up day after day after day after day. And I mean, you know, Meta, Meta is on its way to 550 here quickly, in my opinion. We'll see. 550 quickly. And then after that, it's going to be 700. So... And then maybe after that, we'll have a pullback. Maybe something will happen in the economy, negative, something, you know, will, will transpire. But uh, we, got, we got a ways to go in regards to this whole meta situation. And that's why that stock goes up, it seems like, every day and why likely it's going to keep going up. If the, the market could just be flat and meta will still be rolling. And never mind if the market's a little bullish, meta's flying. So, you know, either way, meta's set. The only thing that could keep meta down right now is if the NASDAQ crashed or just some epic... Uh, underperformance from the NASDAQ. Outside of that, Meta is just going to keep rolling. 550 is on the way quickly. Okay. Elf on a shelf. Why is it that every single dip is bought up in the stock? Boom, 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 boom. Every dip. It's like, it's amazing, right? To show you this, this is a one year chart in regards to Elf on a shelf, right? And keep in mind, Elf's a high valuation night name. So it's not like Elf is some company that is trading, you know, so super cheap, like, a, you know, a Meta is, in my opinion, a 23 forward P. Meta is a, Elf's a very high valuation name. I mean, we're talking about a very high valuation name. Look at the P on Elf. Look at the forward P on the Elf. They're substantially above the market, right? And then this is a one-year chart in regards to this. Hold on. So, 
Still got four silver play buttons, still. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Still four silver play buttons? Um, okay, Elf on a Shelf. One year chart on this baby, right? Look at this. Dips there, bought up immediately. Dips here, bought up immediately. Dip, bought, dip, bought, dip, bought. Every dip. And then it had its big dip here, right? Where the stock went from about 130 all the way down to 90 bucks. There we had a very tough market in general, right? During that particular time frame. And also there was a belief, there was a belief that Elf's growth rates were gonna slow massively. And so all that, and then the dip cut bought straight up, right? And then I tried to dip again, bought right up, bought up, bought up. Every single dip's bought up in regards to stock, but why is it happening? So here's the deal, okay? The company's reached escape velocity now at this point in time. The company has had 20 consecutive quarters of net sales growth. And the thing is, the growth has just gotten more and more and more ridiculous as time goes along. And every time you think this company's growth, that's gotta be the top it smashes it. Right here, you thought 16% growth, that's a top. And then it did a 24%. Then you're like, that's a top. Then it did 50%. And you're like, that's a top. Then it did 78%. And you're like, okay, that's definitely a top. And then the latest quarter posted 85%, 85% sales growth, right? And so in regards to a stock like Elf, every dip in the stock will be bought for as long out as I can see until there's an obvious big negative change in the business model. Like if Elf also went from 70 and 80% growth down to 10% growth, then there'd be a whole re-rating in regards to stock. Then there would finally be a big dip that wouldn't be bought up. Okay. But as long as this company, even if their growth decelerates and you know, let's say their revenue growth goes to 60%, 50%, 40%, it's still going to be every dip spot up because the company's now reached escape velocity. And so the next thing you know, it's going to be 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks until there's an obvious, obvious major break in the business model. But until that point in time is reached, which I don't even know when that time's going to be, you know, you could have lost a lot of money betting against this stock over the years. I can tell you that much, right? I don't even know when this, that point's going to be. You could be waiting months. You could be waiting years for that until there's an obvious break in the business model. The way I would put it in regards to Elf is Elf is going on their Apple run right now. Apple went on one of the most incredible runs from 2001 to 2021, right? If you go back to prior to 2001, you go back to like 2000, Apple was in a tough place. It was in a very tough place. You know, that's prior to iPod coming out and obviously all the products we know today, way before iPhone, way before, uh, you know, iPad and, and the Mac business, you know, really boomed again and, and all those sorts of things, right? Apple was in a very tough spot, very similar to where Elf was prior to me getting the company. It was like, it was a company that had upside potential, but they were in a tough place. They needed a lot to fundamentally change their business model to get them going in the right trajectory, right? And then obviously Steve Jobs showed off the iPod, they built the iTunes store, and then, you know, the story was never the same in regards to Apple, right? And it went on an incredible run. The business model had fundamentally changed. Apple reached escape velocity after they got everybody in the iPod ecosystem and then really got everybody in the iPhone ecosystem. It was game over, right? And then it was just build, build, build. And so it went on one of the most incredible runs we've ever seen in, in history, just to be quite frank. And only in that span, there was only four years where the stock was down. Only four years, from 2001 to 2021, only four years. One of those years was a great financial crisis, okay? So, I mean, what stock wasn't down in the great financial crisis? And two of those down years were like barely down. 3% and 5% like put me to sleep, right? That's the run Elf's on right now. And so, will it be certain years that maybe the stock's down? Sure. But overall, there's a clear trend going on with Elf, like there's a clear trend that was going on with Apple, right? And so, when I look at a stock like Elf, I have 0% interest in selling a stock, 0%. Why would I? It doesn't matter what the valuation's at in regards to this one. When a company delights you to the upside, time in and time out, when their revenues are constantly skyrocketing, when their margins are consistently getting better and better and better, right? When their projected earnings per share is expected to increase rapidly over the next several years, those are the type of stocks that you just hold on for dear life and you just... Let it, let it be what it's going to be. And if the market has corrections, crashes, if there's suddenly worries with the stock, you let it play out. You let it play out until there's a fundamental, very negative, sustainable change in the business model. You hold on for dear life for those sorts of stocks because they don't come around very often. I mean, think about who I just compared Elf to. I compared them to Apple. They're an Apple. They're in an Apple to like run right now. 
If I had to compare them to another stock of, uh, that I would think of off the top of my head, it's an old investment of mine from years ago, Monster Beverage, back when they were called Hanson's Natural Beverage. They went on an incredible run where it seemed like you know, every dip that uh, that stock ever had just ended up getting bought up because they it reached escape velocity and it was just like the world is theirs. They're going to be the next 50 billion, 100 billion, multi hundred billion dollar drink company, right? Which they ended up becoming. And so Elf now at this point in time, they're going to become a cosmetics giant. As a cosmetics giant, you are not with a value of a single, single billion dollar market cap. When you're a cosmetics giant, you have a market capitalization in the tens of billions of dollars or $100 billion plus. That is where ELF is going. And so that's why I hold on to every share because when I look at my shares that I have 2,000 plus percent gain, I think there's gonna be a day when I have 5,000 percent gain on that or 10,000 percent gain. And so I just hold on for dear life to that baby, okay? That's the moral of that story, okay? Very important to understand the different dynamics that affect different stocks in the market. In all three of those stocks I just took you through, very different dynamics in regards to what's going on with those business models. And that's important to understand. Okay. Appreciate y'all joining me. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video here today. If you're looking to join my Patreon, support my content, do so with the pinned comment down there. You've got two tiers available there. And like I said, definitely consider this tier. If you like this video that I just put out for you here, you're going to really like to become master of stock market course. Cause if you feel like you learned a lot from that video, you just watch, wait till how much you learn from that course overall. Okay. Pin comment down there. Much love and have a great day.